Hello and welcome to the Hard Card Podcast recorded and filmed at Authentic Collectibles HQ in Perth, Western Australia. It's a bit of an early start to the recording of our fifth episode because we are joined by an anti pedean driver that now calls the United States of America home. He's not quite the OG in that respect, although he feels pretty embedded in the US scene now compared to some of our more recent exports. Of course, I'm talking about three-time Supercars champion, Bathurst 1000 winner and IndyCar race winner, Scott McLaughlin. He's in downtown Indianapolis right now during testing. Scotty, thanks for joining me. How are you going? No worries, ABL. No, all good. How are you? I just uh, it's a good time, good time of year for us, getting ready for the five hundred and whatnot. And um, you know, it's just our year sort of starting, just uh, just about to take off and get pretty crazy. So good time to be over here, that's for sure. You um you've had that sort of non championship start to the year, which I guess is a bit of an odd thing when we're sort of here talking about our season opener and how it has to be this and that different format. Didn't necessarily work perfectly, but I mean, it's interesting that IndyCar does these different things, right? Yeah, I think you've, you know, ultimately it was, it was great for the teams from a, a revenue perspective, but, you know, that was ultimately we're putting on a show to people that, are, you know, don't really know much about IndyCar or new to the sport and have plenty of opportunity to help uh, IndyCar grow and, um, I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was, um, you know, it was, it was, it was a technical track, you know, we raced there before we tested there before and to put a lap together there was really, really hard, a lot of different corners and whatnot, but the way that we sort of had it set up to race tended up for, for a lot of us drivers to be on the conservative side, which probably took away from the aggression and the racing that you normally see in IndyCar. But, um, you know, ultimately you live and learn from these things. And, you know, I think, like you said, it's, it's nice that they try something. It's not just a, a series that just, you know, do, does the same thing every year. We, we definitely do different things. And they ask the drivers a lot, you know, of our feedback, which is nice too. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a, you know, I feel like it's something that can really build um, from there for sure. It's interesting because that is some feedback from drivers here sometimes is that maybe the series doesn't utilise their expertise quite to that level. You've sort of set a bit of a trend by heading to the States, I guess, you know, like uh, Shane Van Gisbergen, is now there. Cam Waters is starting to make his sort of exploratory steps into the NASCAR scene. Is it nice to have some old mates showing up over there? I don't know how much time you really get to spend with these guys when they're there, but is it kind of nice to have that company in that part of the world anyway? Yeah, it's it's certainly weird because uh, I think, you know, when we were racing back in the day, I mean, I haven't seen Cam since he's been here for that couple of weeks, but um, with Shane, like, you know, like we were always hammer and tong and like we had obviously got along, but within reason like our teams basically hated each other and <laughs> that was just how it was but um you know we always had that respect and and then now going to dinner with you know him and, and chilling out and and you know seeing a different side of him is it's something that i have probably haven't seen since our sbr days way back in the day um so it's kind of cool to just hang out with him and you know for me you know I've, you know this is my fourth year here now so i certainly feel a lot like you said a lot more comfortable with things so there's and little things that he's telling me about that I certainly don't miss, like trying to get organized over here. Yeah. Um, but yeah. he's doing really well. I think he's, he's, um, he's killing it. I always, we, I always said he would. He's, he's one of the guys that, you know, you could put him in anything, he'd be fine. And, and I'm really enjoying having someone to watch in the Xfinity series um, because I didn't really have anyone when Penske left. So it's nice to, uh, you know, watch someone and have someone to share on. There are those over here that think that, you know, you guys making this move to the States is a concern for supercars, a series, uh, sorry, a sign that the series isn't good enough or whatever. I have my own thoughts on this, but where do you stand on it? Is it a bad sign for supercars or is it just a sign that, you know, this category can actually develop talent good enough to, to compete in other arenas, in big arenas? Yeah, I think the reason I left was because I achieved what I wanted to achieve. Um, and I think there's a lot more in the world landscape of racing like than just staying at home and being a supercar driver and that but the, you can easily do that as well you know i could have stayed and i felt like you know you in a really good wicket and be in front of some of the best racing fans in the world but there's an opportunity that you can maybe go and extend yourself race on different tracks new, learn a new discipline like these two are doing and what brody's done and what I, like myself now with indycar um there was an opportunity that i really couldn't pass up and uh, yeah, I, I absolutely. I think the better we go, I've always said it since I left, you know, 
the better I went in IndyCar, the more doors opened up to people believing that supercars is, you know, one of the best, you know, with some of the best talent in the world. Um, and I still believe that's the case. I think, you know, some of the driving and some of the tracks that we race on down under is, you know, first class and the events that the supercars put on is first class. But there's also, you know, so much outside of Australia as well. It's not, you know, or, or New Zealand that, you know, people can pursue and, um, it's just cool to see, you know, other guys like Brody, like Shane, like Cam that have really tried to extend themselves and try something different because it is so much different. Like oval racing is nuts. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it, it's, you can't even describe it until you, once you get out there and you understand it, you see it. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's cool to see them trying a different discipline and, and, and taking themselves out there outside of their comfort zone. I definitely want to come back to, you know, oval racing and that sort of stuff, but just to quickly touch on the big news down here at the moment, you know, um, you were clearly following along when when the uh, Brody and Erebus split kind of happened eight, eight or so weeks ago. He's now coming back ahead of the Taupo round. How have you sort of seen all that play out from afar? Uh, it's, I said, you know, like I responded to a, a statement that was put out, which I didn't agree with, I guess, per- personally, um, which was obvious. But, you know, I think there's three sides to every story one's you know the truth the not the truth and you know what a, yeah. what a natural real story whatever you or call someone, that someone's but, truth and the other person's truth and then the truth exactly in the middle. right so yeah. I, I don't know i'm just glad to see someone like brody back behind the wheel i think he's he's a he's a true talent um and it sucked i think from a perspective i looked at it supercars didn't have their reigning champ on the grid um and that wasn't because he left to go somewhere else he clearly just didn't see eye to eye with his team which is crazy, and I thought that supercars maybe should have stepped in and maybe made sure it would it happened, and that's just what I I believed, um, and I think a lot of people agreed with me in that regard, and I think Shane was the same bit. But sometimes, you know, you have to from a commercial perspective and whatnot, you know, you, you do have to you know take the high road, which I think Brody did for sure. But yeah, um, I just felt bad for him. You know, he, he all he wanted to do was run number one, and and I knew it was pretty tough for him seeing those those cars running without him. Um, yeah. But I'm glad they've somehow sorted it out. Uh, and yeah, it's, 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 it's just good to see a guy like that, you know, again, being able to run the number one, at least this year, especially um, being, being the reigning champ. Last question about supercars. I, I don't want to dwell on the fact that, you know, the, obviously you enjoy great success. There was some tension with, you know, some, with the paddock, I guess, when you did kind of leave with the fullness of time. Now you've still been such an active follower of the series. You're obviously still a fan of the series. How's your sort of feeling towards it now? You know, with that sort of few years under your belt uh, overseas. Oh, uh, no, I've, I, I've always loved it. I've loved it since I was six years old. You know, I, I, I it's for me, it's when you see all this stuff going on with Brody and, you know, certain things, commentary about, you know, how the sport's looking and, you know, it's ups and downs and stuff. You sort of ride the wave just like I, I always have since I was a fan. I mean, obviously, I was on the Inner Sanctum and um, rode the wave, you know, from that, that spot when I was when I was coming through the ranks. Um, you know, I, I, I love the sport. I just want to see the sport thrive. I just want to see, you know, them produce the best racing because I know they can. It's just an amazing product that they've got down under there. So I guess I'm really passionate for that. But, I, yeah, I just I, – I still enjoy it. I'm still very passionate to – you know, watching the race, the racing, the hardest thing for me is the races are on quite late here. Yeah. So I, I mainly only see practice and qualifying and stuff, but sometimes that's, you know, that's enough for me to go Brody or Will Brown's probably going to win this week. Cause they, you know, the cars just look crazy. You know, you can sort of see the script right in itself. Yeah. Um, but you know, and, and I enjoy it, but I do enjoy the commentary of it all. I enjoy tweeting about it. It's fun. Um, especially around Bathurst time. It's cool. Like it, it certainly is. Bathurst is the, the hardest one for me, I think. Uh, watching from afar because like I just love that race and and uh, love qualifying for it um, you know racing and winning it I was lucky enough to do that and you know it was, it's just it's such a cool cool category and, and really enjoy it but yeah look we had our ups and downs as you do as a, as a winner um, it's just you know we rode it but we come out on top which is fantastic. I reckon I could give you a list of 11 teams that would be pretty happy to talk to you if you want to come back and do the Bathurst 1000 at any point. So I wouldn't. I reckon 11 teams won't let me qualify, so that's drama. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's let's move on to, to IndyCar. I, I, I genuinely feel like not enough is made of the fact that, 
your open wheel experience before heading to IndyCar was like, what, a few state-level Formula Ford rounds? I think you raced here in Perth, actually. Like, to learn the art yep. of open wheel racing and the art of proper downforce as an accomplished driver with a bunch of habits already in place and all that sort of stuff, how difficult was that? It's such an amazing achievement, really. Yeah, no, it's, uh, thanks, man. It's been hard. Um, it's hard gaining that trust level. You know, obviously, Formula Ford is a Formula Ford. There's no aerodynamics whatsoever on that thing. Um, so, you know, that was just more open wheeling, wheeler. And I, I guess for me, the hardest thing was to learn was like the racecraft and, and yeah. understanding like what, what the give or take is. You're so used to like, I raced since I was 16, a supercar, you know, banging doors and the worst thing that could come out of your car was your mirror would fall off. You were here. It's like your wheels can come off. So you've got to be like, really, you got to get, find that comfort level and your and knowing the proximity of your front and rear wings and whatnot. But I think that was probably the hardest thing to get used to. I think finding the time and it's a race car at the end of the day. And you just try and find you, if, if Joseph is braking at the hundred feet board, well, the car can do it. So I'm yeah. going to break there and I'm going to try and be quicker. And that's, that, that's, that is just more a racing mentality. For me, the hardest thing was learning racecraft, learning, you know, ovals and, and, and that, and, and then learning, you know, the proximity of your car and how, 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 how much you can get away with. And, um, you know, once I got sort of felt like I got a hold of that, it took me a full season, I think to get used to that. Uh, I really felt we could nail it down. I always felt like we had the speed. It was just a matter of, yeah. putting it all together and, and um, yeah, it's been a, been a fun ride. You touched on the ovals before. Obviously, you know, on the super speedways in a NASCAR, it's pretty fast, but the speeds, you're not just dealing with a, a whole new style of racing on ovals, but, you know, insane speeds in an Indy car. What's the sensation of driving one of these cars around one of the big ovals like at those just like eye-watering speeds? It's, uh, it, it's very hard to uh, compare because, like, it's it's perspective you know and, and like if you're like that you don't know you're going that fast until you have a moment or you're coming into pit lane and you're still trying to pump your brake up and you're coming in too fast like it's it's like it's all relative like everyone's doing the same speed until something bad happens yeah. right um I, you know i i uh have really enjoyed learning that craft and i think it's kind of like a bathurst deal where you really build up to the racetrack indy's very much like that yeah. you know it takes you some time to really understand the race understand what goes on but i feel like we're in a really good spot in that regard but um it's just yeah it's it's crazy it's, i i've enjoyed it so much uh understanding the draft understanding you know the dirty air and where to set my tools like you know, we're looking around at like the flags on top of the flag poles on top of the grandstands, you know, figuring out the wind. And when I first came here, I was like, I think that's that's just a myth. Like people are like, there's no way that you just look at the flag <laughs> yeah. and figure it all out. And then you sort of, you know, you, everyone says it and you're like, well, maybe that is true. And then, you know, the minute I stopped paying attention to the flags, I crashed. So it's sort of, it's. So um, you're doing that while you're driving the car. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You know, you look around <laughs> like you see the. You know, if you've got a bit of, if you know, you go into turn one, you've got uh, a crosswind, which is, means you've got a tail into turn one, so you're sort of coming in pretty quick. You know, you, you're always going to have push at turn one and probably exit of two, but when you get through sort of three, it's going to turn pretty good, and then it's almost going to turn too much at four, so you've got to really set up your car for all four corners. Um, so it's, you know, you're you're hanging off the anti-roll bar levers, you're on the weight jacker. Um, you know, the four laps at Indy, like, like for qualifying, they're the most scary laps of your life. Like the, just in terms of just how you've got to, you basically hold it flat, but you've got to think about the next lap and the lap after that and how you set your car up. It's, it's, um, it's fun. And when you've done it, you're like, Oh, like fuck for that. <laughs> you know, like that's like literally like how, how it is. So it's, um, yeah. That's, uh, that's amazing. I, I wanted to ask you about Indy. We had, uh, we had Luke Mason on the summer grill, um, uh, back at the end of last year. And he was talking a lot about, you know, the race day experience uh, at the Indy 500, even from, you know, the perspective of a, of a race engineer. What's it like as an athlete in one of, you know, this isn't just the biggest car race in the world. It's one of the biggest sporting events in the world. What's it like to take part in that as an athlete? Oh, it's it, honestly, man, like I, I love Bathurst. I love racing at home with Pookie back in the day, but the, like, this is the closest I've felt to like, 
genuinely being like a, a, a superhero. Like it's crazy, you know, yeah. like the, you walk down gasoline alley in the morning and you do it with your family. It's, um, it's, a, it's a really emotional day, you know, it's up and down. And then, you know, the patriotism that the Americans show their troops being a Memorial day and stuff is, is pretty like, you know, heartwarming. Like, you know, people that they talk about the sacrifices they've taken and stuff. It's hard not to get amongst that and, and, and get emotional about it. It's just an amazing and being a foreigner, you think, oh, no, it wouldn't really bother me. But it's, it is very, like, you know, um, just kind of stirring. Privileged. Yeah, you feel very privileged to race on, like, such an amazing weekend and knowing that, you know, this is this year's 108th running. Like, it's nuts, you know, the amount of racing, the amount of history that you're racing on top of. And, um, yeah, it's, it's – I highly recommend to anyone to, like, come to this race at least once. Like, even if you don't like it, Nika, even if you don't like ovals – just to attend and see the city, how they get behind it, see what happens. It's just, there's nothing that matches it. There's nothing. And I, and I genuinely thought like, you know, Bathurst 1000 morning's pretty awesome. And, and you get out on the, the, the grid and there's, you're like a sardine. You can't move anywhere or whatever. Just think about that like 20 times. Like yeah. it's, it's, it's just crazy for one day. It's like, yeah, nuts, nuts. How's life outside of motorsport? Obviously, you know, you talked a bit about, you know, Shane moving and, you know, guys wanting to move overseas. That's a fairly natural human thing to want to do, just to, to go and explore another country and, and and experience another culture. Does it sort of feel like home a little bit in the States now after a few years of being there? Yeah, for sure. I think the hardest thing for me has been so far away from mum and dad and, and the family and whatnot, my sister and stuff, but um, and my friends, like, you know, I'm, I'm the godfather to one of my best mate's sons. And, you know, I've, I've really missed seeing him grow up and whatnot. And eventually when we have kids, it's most likely going to be here. And a lot of my best friends aren't going to be able to spend as much time as we probably thought they were going to spend with my future kids, you know, and it's, um, that, that, and that same goes for my parents, but that's probably the hardest thing. Um, yeah. but like living here, I've probably had, I've definitely had a, a head start with my wife, Carly and all her family and friends are here and, you know, definitely it's at, at, at times, especially in 2020, 2021, when you couldn't see anyone that softened the blow from a, you know, holiday perspective, you know, Christmas and, you know, yeah. have Thanksgiving over here and stuff and learning all those sort of holidays and stuff. It was definitely made it easier. Um, but no, I, 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 uh, I, I love it here. I, I enjoy, I feel like the American fans and the people have really, you know, warmed to me and, and welcomed me. And, and that's, um, that's been nice as well. And, and I've really enjoyed that. How does the off-track schedule as an IndyCar driver compare to supercars in terms of, you know, sponsor, media commitments, the simulator work? I guess you don't really have as much of that on the supercars side. What's the comparison to life outside the car? I think from a performance standpoint, I think we actually do more with the team, like with simulator, um, with going to see the team, debriefing, you know, things that we do, um, uh, one thing that's really cool I enjoy here is it's actually a bit more exclusive to meet like someone like myself. So like, it's yeah. not like I'm doing autograph sessions every day at 10 AM. And like, that was good for a part, but I think there's, there's a double edged sword to that because I think you can get to a point where you have almost you're, you're showing your and supercars. I feel like do this, have too many autograph sessions sometimes. And too many sponsor visits that takes away from the the nostalgic, you know, oh man, I'm going to get to meet the driver, you know, um, the exclusivity that a sponsor might pay for that, that, that privilege or, you know, a fan might buy a special ticket for the paddock because he wants to see Alio Cashinevis ride a scooter around pit lane or something like that. Like, I feel like they do a really good job at, you know, making us accessible, but also having some exclusivity to it as well. And, that's I've, I've certainly enjoyed that. It's definitely a, off, on the on track side of an IndyCar race event. I get to the racetrack on a Thursday, sometimes Friday, depending on the day, and and I I I'm out Sunday night straight straight after the race. And yeah. Where in a supercar event, I'd be there probably on a Monday, and I'd leave on Monday, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, there's just because you have so many sponsors, you got to get to, and that's part of the parcel. It's just 
it's how Australia works compared to how America yeah. works, and it's just very different. But a um, bit hard to do a ride day in an Indy car as well. You can't really squeeze yeah. someone in. Yeah, behind yeah, you. exactly. <laughs> no, no ride days over here. Oh, no, and and uh, but yeah, no, it's a, it's um, yeah, it's it's, it's it's not it's hard to explain without sounding like a dickhead. Like with, yeah, without I know sounding what you mean. like a yeah, yeah, like it's. But I, I really think that both sides could learn a bit from each other. What are your goals for the IndyCar season this year? What have you sort of set as, you know, the pass mark and the above pass mark for, for 2024? I think, you know, and you know as well as anyone, like I never really came out and said I'm going to win the championship or whatnot, but ultimately my goal is to win the championship and the 500. Whether that happens both this year, I'm not sure, but I know for a fact that like I've got the tools and I, I've got, I feel like I've, I'm at the experience level now that I can really put together a strong, you know, strong tenure and, and be be somewhere, you know, there or thereabouts at both ends of the races, like whether that's the last 25 laps of the 500 and then or, you know, being in, in the mix come Nashville in September for the championship. Um, so I've, I've got the people, I've got the tools, I've got the, you know, the car and, and the experience now to do something. Um, so there's no doubt that I feel like we'll, we'll be there or thereabouts. I know I said no more supercars questions, but I did forget one. The next round coming up is back in New Zealand. You know, the series has returned to New Zealand. Do you know much about Taupo? And you know how special it is when supercars races in that country. Uh, it must be just a nice feeling knowing that your fans are going to get that experience again after another year off. Oh, it's, you know, honestly, New Zealand was – I think I'm biased because I'm a Kiwi, but it was one of the – like some of the best events that we'd have all year because just the passion – you know, the cheers that you'd get when you took the lead or, you know, had a good shootout lap or something like that. I'm not a Kiwi like, and it's yeah. the be- it was always one of the absolute best events of the year. You're like, that's not a yeah. that's not a home thing. It is insane, the atmosphere there. But that's where I'm talking about, like, the saturation of, like, almost I feel like the Australian fans kind of take for granted how good they've got it with the amount of racing that they get. And that's just natural. They're going to have a ton of races in Australia, but like the Kiwis get one race and they come out and they just sell the place out yeah. and be so passionate and want to see a Kiwi win. And there's nothing like it. Um, and, and I'm so pumped for New Zealand to have a race. I think Tony Quinn and, and all the people have done such an awesome job with, you know, one I've seen QR, how different that place looks now. I haven't been there for a few years, but I can't wait to go back and see it. Um, and then, you know, obviously Talpo and Highlands, what he's done there for what he's done for New Zealand motorsport has been amazing. Um, it's exactly what the person that we sort of needed to, you know, pump that up. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of jealous. I'm not going to be there. I always yeah. loved Taupo. I raced Taupo in New Zealand V8, Super Tourers. I raced there. I probably raced four or five times when I was, you know, I was still coming up through the Super Two series and whatnot. Um, and it's an awesome track, and it'll, it'll be fun in one of those cars. That's for sure. Be interesting. I think it'd be quite high deg from from, yep. from memory. It was very high deg on. Uh, and, and the Super Tour, um, and we had a pretty good tyre at that point. So it'll be interesting what they, how they go. Let's finish with the Authentic Collectibles Top 10 Shootout. So 10 rapid-fire questions, unsurprisingly. Some are related to collectibles. I think I know the answer to this one already, Scott, but who was your sporting idol growing up? Uh, Greg Murphy. Yeah, I thought you might By say country that. Country Mile. Yeah, I thought yeah. you might say that. Um, did you ever yeah. collect any motor racing memorabilia, posters, you know, stuff like that when you were younger? Yeah, I got heaps. Uh, uh, I got you know Murph stuff like his. Um, I always loved Murph's helmets. Yeah. Um, so like anything that had Murph's helmets on, on I, I loved them. The Kmart stuff. I got a heap of Kmart Commodores. Um, and then yeah, I've actually I got a couple of Van Giz models from back in the day when I was at SBR. I wasn't quite there yet, but bought a couple of those. Um, but yeah, me and my dad we always always collect model cars, so that's why I've always had a pretty good relationship with. Uh, Young William Hall at Authentic Collectibles. <laughs> um, do you uh, do you collect things from your own motorsport career? Yep. Yeah, I I uh, always try and dip the things from William that have got either the number three or the number seventeen. Depends on what car it was or yep. whatnot. But there's definitely things I keep. But I've actually started uh, swapping helmets now. So I've got um, I haven't got too many of my own helmets now. I've swapped with a bunch of drivers, and I've I've got a list that I'm sort of going through this year, trying to finalise. But I'm building a nice little inventory there. Do you have to sort of organise that pre? You know, you see like football players swapping shirts. They always try and tee it up early in the game on if they're playing on someone. Yeah. Do you have to do you have to tee it up so you don't someone doesn't beat you to you know some famous helmet you want to get hold of? 
Oh yeah, no, it's normally a January job that you go through, and and and. <laughs> but the problem is, you've got like you've got all this testing before the season. All your helmets don't come till sort of March, so you've got them. You've got a very small window that you've got to kind of organize them. That you say, hey, I can't give you my helmet yet because. I need yeah, it. We, we, I need it at <laughs> yeah. the moment. So then I'll give it to you at St. Pete or something like that. So that's kind of what's happened. <laughs> you're you're a big sort of general sports fan. You've got your Masters hoodie on there. Do you collect or have anything yeah. interesting from outside of motorsport in your sort of personal collection? Uh, you know, I I got my – I threw the first pitch at the Chicago Cubs game. I've got oh, that ball cool. that I threw, which was cool. Um, I've got – I played Augusta – um, in December and January last year, and I've got both scorecards from that, so that's pretty cool. And the ball that I played with, and uh, um, yeah, the ball marker I use, like stuff like that. It's just uh, and then what's another thing? I've, oh, I guess you could go back to the Cubs as well. I've got a, um, a cub, the Cubs jumper that they made for me with number three and McLaughlin on it. But um, oh, yeah, and cool. then a, a couple of my Western Bulldogs jumpers as well that I, I that they've signed by the team. What's the ultimate race car you'd love to own or drive? I would love to own one of my – probably the 2019 Bathurst winner. I think I would love to own that. To to drive, I would love to drive Murph's 03 Bathurst winner. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a, um, that's a very good choice. Like, I'd love to go back to 03 and just drive that thing like just before the race or something and just feel what it – like a proper – like that, that, that era – VY, like, you know, it, that thing was sick. It was such such good cool cars. Car. They were such – I assume you've got an order in for one of Authentic's recreations on the ZB body of the of that Murph livery. If you haven't, I'll let Will. Will, yeah, Will it's Will, a ZB, I'm no fucking way. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. maybe we won't tell Will to send you one then. Um, Australian, yeah, nah, right. <laughs> uh, Australian Kiwi or US pub food, what's best? Who has the best pub food? Oh, Shit. Uh, <laughs> I, I think it's hard to beat an Aussie Palmer, man. Like it really is. Like it's it's uh, with soggy chips underneath. It's uh, it's hard to beat. But uh, I um, yeah, probably I'd say an Aussie Palmer. I honestly can't beat it. Good answer, I reckon. Uh, ovals or road courses? Uh, road courses only just though. Only I've won a, I've won a road course. More than I've uh, I've run it one and over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fair enough. Uh, and last one: Friday night footy or Monday night football? Monday night football. There you go. Love Mondays. The, yeah, Fridays yeah. is Fridays. Yeah, no, nah. Mondays are cool. Mondays are back. Thursday, Thursday night should be the one. Ask Tim Hodges that one. Well, it's it's so, pretty much become a thing now. I think it's pretty much yeah. most weeks now. At uh, it, it, certainly for the start of the season, there's been Thursday night footy, which does always make it feel like the weekend's coming a bit faster than it actually oh, is. Which is that's <laughs> the hardest thing with living over here. I I hardly watch any AFL anymore. Yeah, you know, I watch the grand final. That's it. But it's it's um. Such a bad time <laughs> yeah. for me. So Nah, yeah. absolutely. Look, thanks for having a chat with us, mate. We really appreciate that. Um, I just need to add that Authentic has a ripper special at the moment for all Scotty Mac fans. They're offering 20% off their full range of Scott's IndyCar models. So um, all you have to do is visit their website at authenticcollectibles.com.au, order any of those cars and use the discount code SCOTT at the checkout and you get 20% off them and we'll be back in the next couple of weeks with a new episode of the hard card podcast don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the authentic collectibles youtube channel hit that little bell to make sure you never miss an episode thanks again scotty no worries thanks guys appreciate it